My name is Amy. Currently, I live in my husband Bob's family home. Bob is always busy with work and is often away on business trips. As a result, he is seldom at home, and I live with my mother-in-law and our three-month-old daughter. Bob's father had already passed away. There used to be another person in our household, Bob's sister, but she had to move out due to her job. Bob's sister was always kind to me, so I liked her. It was sad when she left, but there was another reason why I wanted her to stay. My mother-in-law, named Karen, keeps harassing me. Hey, Annie, what are you doing? The brat is crying. Go comfort her quickly, she said, pointing at my daughter. Um, could you please stop referring to her as a brat? She's your granddaughter. So what? I hate the sound of a crying child. Just do what I said. Comfort the brat. So I had to interrupt my chores and comfort my daughter. But then, if I don't progress with the housework, she'll be upset about that too. Finally, when my daughter fell asleep, I resumed my work, but then Karen started berating me again. Stop letting the baby sit on the floor. It's in the way. Well, but you were the one who said not to spend money on a bulky crib that she'll outgrow soon. Then carry the baby on your back. Just stop letting her sleep on the floor. It's so inconvenient. During the day, with Karen shouting like that, my daughter woke up again. Reluctantly, I picked up my daughter and carried her on my back while I continued with the chores. By three months, the baby starts to get quite heavy and carrying her on my back is a significant burden. Given that I had to do housework in such conditions, my work speed slowed down considerably. Somehow, I managed to finish all the chores by dinner time, but Karen was relentless. How can you be an unfit housewife if you spend all day and not make much progress with the housework? If I were younger, my mother-in-law would have slapped me, and she was abusive to me again. I was mentally exhausted. After putting my daughter to bed late in the night, I reached out to my husband. So your mom is being completely unreasonable. I see. I'm sorry I can't be there for you. Apologies, I have a meeting coming up. I'll hear more from you later. That's what my husband said before he hung up. My husband Bob seems busy too, and I can't really depend on him. I have to stand up to my mother-in-law Karen on my own, but I feel utterly helpless by myself. One night, my three-month-old daughter's crying was exceptionally terrible. Maybe she was hungry or something was bothering her. In any case, she was wailing nonstop. Karen, waking up in irritation, stormed in. It's so noisy. Shut that brat up. Do you even know what time it is? It's 11 p.m. It's not too late yet. Shut up. I usually sleep at this time, don't you know? I can't stand her wailing. Do something now. The angrier Karen gets, the more it scares my daughter, causing her to cry more. I understand. Please calm down a little. When you raise your voice, it makes the baby cry even more. Don't order me around. I'm the one giving orders here. If you can't quiet her in five seconds, I swear I'll hit that baby. What? No way. One, two, three. Indeed, Karen started counting. I want to believe that she would never resort to such inhumane behavior as kidding a three-month-old baby, but the fact that I can see her doing it is what's terrifying. Five, it seems she's not stopping. Can't be helped. She then readied her fist. No, you're kidding, right? But my mother-in-law wasn't joking. I can't stand the wailing. Be quiet. And then Karen really did raise her fist to my daughter. I screamed out in disbelief. I never thought she would resort to violence. My daughter was screaming louder than I'd ever heard. Ah, enough of this noise. Shut her up now. Karen seemed completely oblivious to the fact that this was all happening because she had hit my daughter. My daughter ended up with a bruise on her face, and I immediately called for an ambulance. The doctor came and examined my daughter. Doctor, how is she? My daughter? Your daughter is... The doctor paused, and my mind went to the worst possible outcome. You're joking. No, I apologize for the confusion. Your daughter is fine. 
There might be a bruise, but it'll likely heal without leaving a mark. So please don't worry. Oh, thank God. I felt a wave of relief wash over me and my strength drain away. But what happened? Did she fall or something? No, nothing like that. It's just my mother-in-law who lives with us. She did something unimaginable. Could you tell me more about that? With that, someone entered the examination room. I recognized this person who would help me out of my current situation. The next day, I returned home with this person. Oh my, you ended up spending the night in the hospital? Quite the life you lead, neglecting your housework as a housewife. Karen taunted me with a smirk. I was seething inside. What's with your attitude? You sure had no qualms about doing such a terrible thing to my daughter. I showed Karen my quiet but resolute anger. Huh? What's with the attitude? Got a problem? Of course I have a problem. You did something so horrible to my daughter. Apologize. No. When I raised my voice, Karen yelled back. What the hell? Don't you dare talk back to me. I'm your mother-in-law, you know. A daughter-in-law doesn't dare defy her. Karen's face went beet red. But I did not back down and stared Karen down. You're getting on my nerves. Don't you dare oppose me. Saying that, Karen hit me this time. You just raised your hand, didn't you? Huh. Raising your hand means you're ready, right? Ready for whatever comes next, whatever might happen to you. At my words, Karen was taken aback. But what are you saying? What do you plan to do? Because of what Karen said, I called someone over. Please come in. Upon that invitation, the person who entered was my sister-in-law, Rebecca. Rebecca, why have you come back? I heard Amy's baby had to be rushed to the hospital, so I came as fast as I could. What on earth are you doing to Amy and the baby, Mom? Rebecca was quite furious. Seeing Rebecca so upset, even Karen seemed taken aback. And of course, she would be. After all, Rebecca is a lawyer. Don't tell me you're going to do something as a lawyer just because I might have lost my temper. Karen trembled as she said this. What are you talking about? It's obvious we'll sue, right? I've already told Rebecca that. What? What are you thinking? There's no way I'll allow that. Hearing the word, sue, Karen burst out shouting. I'm the one who wants to shout. I feel like I've aged dramatically from the scare of thinking my daughter's life was in danger. Mom, there were clear marks on the baby. It's clearly an assault, and you also just physically threatened Amy, didn't you? You could be charged with battery for that. Hold on. This is just a little family communication. To sue over something like this, don't you think it's a bit hasty? Despite Karen's desperate excuses, I wasn't having any of it. Don't say such nonsense. Can't you see I'm angry? If you're not planning to apologize, I'm just going to proceed with legal action. Wait, at that time I was just a little frustrated. You know how people get irritable when they're tired, right? And when I could hear the wailing all night, it was just too much. Karen was making excuses, but that doesn't make it okay for her to resort to violence. Mother-in-law, it's unfortunate, but I don't plan to forgive someone who just makes excuses like this. I'm going to take legal action immediately, and I'm not intending to negotiate a settlement. Wait, stop. First of all, stop suing me. Do you realize how much I've helped you? Suddenly, Karen started claiming she had helped me. Amy, has Mon ever helped you? No, not at all. Rather than helping, mother-in-law has only been a hindrance and even criticizing my housekeeping. I see, and she's talking about having helped. I wonder what she's talking about. Rebecca and I gave Karen a cold stare. I said I helped you, didn't I? Why are you looking at me like that? I did help Amy. When Amy was tired and sleeping, I quietly did some housekeeping. Ah, could it be that you're the one who's been waking up in the middle of the night to snack? I wish you'd stop. It's really bothersome. What? I left some for your breakfast, didn't I? That's just my kindness. That's not what I call kindness. You're just handing me your leftovers, and it was too little to be called breakfast. Plus, you left the dishes without washing them, 
so it actually made my chores even more difficult. Mom, that's just terrible. Rebecca was appalled at Karen's actions. Hey, don't look at me like that. I have my own troubles too, you know. Well, troubles? Like what exactly? The truth is, I'm well aware of my own harmful behavior. Karen surprisingly admitted this. You're aware of your harmful behavior. You know, I tend to lash out when I get mad. I understand that it's not right, so I want to change this habit. But people can't always change as easily as they want. Even if I keep telling myself how bad it is, I just can't control myself. Karen continued speaking through her tears. At this rate, I might end up hurting even those I care about the most. Emmy, I need you to help me reform. You can tie me up if you need to. Do whatever it takes to make me repent. Karen even ended up prostrating herself. Wait, please calm down, mother-in-law. I think we should talk this through first. Just talking isn't enough to apologize to you. Be stricter with me. Otherwise, I just can't forgive myself for. Karen was genuinely crying, and it seemed she was truly remorseful. Thinking this, I was about to forgive Karen, but then? Amy, don't be fooled. What? Whenever she's in a tight spot, Mom plays the victim to stop being blamed. This is her usual tactic. Even if she does it in front of her own daughter, she can't hide her scheme. What? What are you talking about? I have no idea. I would never think of such a thing. This is just... But Karen was clearly flustered. Looking closer, even though she was crying so much just moments ago, her tears had already dried. She must have been pretending to cry. I can't believe it, mother-in-law, to go to such lengths to evade responsibility. Wait, hold on. I wasn't trying to run away from my mistakes. I just wanted to voice my feelings. Karen was trying to make yet another weak excuse. There's no way such an excuse would work on me. Please, enough with this, mother-in-law. I'm tired of your complaints. All I'm going to do is proceed with legal actions. My mind is made up. As I said that, Karen's face turned beet red with rage. How dare you? Why should I have to hear such things from you? Do you think I'll just sit by while you take legal actions against me? Although Karen was shouting those words, another person entered the house. Amy, is our daughter all right? It was my husband, Bob. He heard that our daughter had been rushed to the emergency room, and he bowed to his boss and was allowed to come home temporarily. But Bob, why are you home? Mom, that's not what matters right now. I heard you hit our daughter. How could you? I won't forgive this. Bob was shaking with anger. It was natural, as the daughter he cherishes was subjected to violence. Look, wait a moment, Bob. Why do I have to be told such things? I didn't do anything wrong. No, you clearly did something wrong. If you don't think violence is wrong, you are seriously misguided, mother-in-law. Why don't you stop making excuses? You're alone, but there are three of us, Bob, Rebecca, and me. You can't possibly get your way. How dare you? Are you trying to intimidate me by outnumbering me? Isn't that what they call tyranny of the majority? No, it's not about the tyranny of the majority. It's just that we all agreed to discipline you because you've clearly committed wrongdoing. It's okay if you're under the illusion that you're not wrong, but please stop causing us trouble. As I clearly said those words, Karen began to cry again. It seemed that this time her tears were real. What? Why has it come to this? What on earth have I done? I didn't do anything wrong. Please forgive me. Karen was looked upon with cold eyes by Bob and Rebecca. They must be feeling incredibly sad inside as their real mother is such a mess. Mom, I always thought you were strange, but I never thought you would be this bad. I no longer consider you as my mother. Neither do I. I'm ashamed to consider such a person as my mother. What? Wait a minute. What are you saying? You're the children I gave birth to after bearing a lot of pain. How dare you speak to me in such a way? Even as Karen was crying and shouting, the two of them continued to give her a cold stare. Let's just leave, Amy. I know a cheap motel we can live in for a while. 
In the meantime, I'll proceed with the legal actions against Mom. There's also suspicion of assault and battery, so we have to call the police. Police, don't call the police. I've been telling you I didn't do anything wrong. Why has it come to this? Even as Karen cried and shouted, I did as Rebecca said and left the house. I hid out for a while in a budget hotel that Rebecca had recommended and left the rest up to her. After that, it seems Karen was charged with assault and battery and ended up in jail. Bob and I saw this as an opportunity to find a new home, and we ended up leasing an apartment. Now, our daughter, Bob, and I are living peacefully in our new apartment. Rebecca, who helped me so much, is reportedly having fun, despite her busy life as a lawyer. When Karen got out of jail, she had no choice but to return to an empty house. It's quite pitiful since we haven't told her where our apartment is. There's no way she can come over. Even if she were to find out, there's a security guard at the entrance, so even if she showed up, she'd just be taken away as a suspicious person.